Today on Thunder Bear 4-Wheel Drive, we're back on the 4Runner, and uh, that tool that we ordered to take the cam gear off, well, we already broke it. Check it out. Those holes in there, that's where the studs were. Well, we ripped them out, so we're going to go buy hardware and put them back in. So stick around. We're going to get this bad boy stripped apart, and we're going to get her done. Two hours later. All right, so as you can see, we have replaced the pins with some grade eight half inch bolts and in Keith's hand next to it is the pin that was on here and that tiny little bit was what was threaded in so nah it wasn't working we we definitely aren't going to be ripping those out now so on to actually trying to remove the sprocket moments later so we got the sprocket off unfortunately i wasn't able to film it because i needed both hands to run the breaker bar and Keith needed to be there to hold the tool in place so uh, it was on exceptionally tight it had to have been on more than 150 pound feet so it's only been there for probably 30 years yeah I don't know. <laughs> there, was no lock, there was no loctite on it so it was it was it was on super tight so now we're going to get these shields off get them cleaned up and we'll change out that water neck and upper idler and start getting ready to swap out those seals one hour later. All right, so what you're looking at here is a custom tool that is going to be used to install the crank seal. So if this isn't redneck engineering enough for you, well, we couldn't bear lower IQs any farther for this, but uh, this is what we came up with. So enjoy. All right, so here's our schmancy seal installer. I slid the seal over the snub of the crank and pushed it into the timing cover or the oil pump housing or whatever that is and it went in more than three quarters of the way by hand. We went through all this trouble to come up with this abomination so I made us put it together and then I cranked that bolt down with my fingers and it pushed it the rest of the way in. So it's installed, new seals all the way around. Now it's time to start going back with idler pulleys and covers and all that good stuff. So it's always good when you're doing a job and you had failed parts and you didn't quite understand what was going on to find the actual cause. So this is the tensioner pulley for the timing belt and you can see that the cage started to come apart in here and it's missing some of the cage and the rollers are bearings yeah that's bad so that would be the reason that our belt went and got all gacked up this probably froze in place and the belt skidded across it getting hot so this would be the cause for the overall failure and new tensioner is going in we bought a keith bought a, a gates belt kit that came with the upper idler the tensioner idler and a new water pump so Everything's going in brand new and we'll be good to go. Three hours later. Fire in the hole. All right, everybody, so you heard it run and it still didn't run super awesome and we know that the timing marks are correct now. I decided that we needed to pull the plugs and do a compression test on it and we saw bad things. So I should probably clarify something. We weren't able to test compression on this until now because the timing was so far out and before that it wouldn't have given us accurate readings. So now that we know that the valve timing is correct, we could do a compression test and now we know what real numbers are for the engine and that's why it's such a sad ordeal. I don't know how Toyota numbers its cylinders, but it's the rear driver's side and the middle driver's side. The one closest to the firewall and the one in the middle had like 110 pounds compression 
and everything else was over 175, like between 175 and 185. Those two cylinders, there's something wrong with them, and there we were seeing oil blow by coming up through the into the intake induction system. So I, either it's rings or something. I don't know exactly what's going on with those two cylinders, but it's not good. So we're going to do some research, and Keith's going to do some soul searching and figure out how he wants to move forward. Um, tossing around a ton of different ideas. Thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully we'll uh, have more of an update on this in the near future. Please don't forget to check out some videos here, and uh, we will catch you guys in the next video.